Hayır, ben de canım. Kızım, ben de canım. Çünkü sen çok güzel bir insan. Çok güzel bir insan. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Actually, it's a day which I feel is historical day because this is actually my first first time. Uh, because I think uh, some times ago we sat with members of the correspondence chapel, we, we discussed, we wrote minds, and then I decided to actually inform them that very soon. I will give a press conference after I must have uh, used the time available to me to balance the commission because I took over about just barely two months ago. So I think now is the time uh, for me to uh, give this press conference in order to tell you and the general public my mission and what I have, the plans I have for the Kalosi Public Complaints and Anti-Corruption Commission. So actually this is the essence why we are here today. You see, uh, I served in this commission as director of uh, anti-corruption from 2015 to last year 2020. And then I was posted from Ministry of Justice, of course, when I served as anti-corruption. So I went back to the Ministry of Justice sometimes September last year uh, to, talk, to take over the position of the Director of Public, uh, public uh, Prosecution. So I served as DPP from September last year up to the time His Excellency, the Executive Governor of Ghana said, appointed me to come to this commission and serve as the Acting Executive Chairman. So this is almost... Uh, almost getting to two months now because I think I resumed office on the 9th of uh, July this year. So from then on, I did not actually give any interview or any press conference to members of the press. I was taking my time to study the, the commission, trying to fix things, trying to study the commission because of the past development. And then now I think it's the right time now to uh, give a press conference and then tell you what I have and what are the plans I have for the commission and then the things that we want to do to improve uh, the general functions of the commission as provided under the PCACC law. And you see, the press, the press is a critical stakeholder in the fight against corruption. Because anti-corruption crusade is everybody's business. It's my business, it's your business, it's everybody's business because it is a very big problem that is eating deep down into every fabric of this society. And if we don't join hard, if we don't sacrifice, then definitely there will be no light at the end of the tunnel. Without sacrifice and give our best for us and then for the future generations, definitely we will have a country that we can be proud of because corruption destroys everything. It destroys opportunities, it destroys everything you can think of. It destroys morality. So we have to be very, very serious and then we have to sacrifice to make sure that we achieve this aim of combating the menace of, of corruption. So the press conference, as I earlier on said, is to give you an insight of what I intend to do in this commission, what were and the areas we intend to improve with regard to the general functions of the commission as provided under section 15 of the Public Complaints and Corruption Law 2010 as amended. So this is why we are here today. Now I think I want to not, uh, I want to now start with what are uh, the missions that I have and what are the plans that I have for the Commission. One is I want to improve on the general functions of the Commission as well. You see, the Commission is empowered under Section 9 to receive complaints from the general public, whether by way of receiving or even on its own 
abortion. The commission can go out and investigate corruption and all other matters relating to corruption on its own without receiving any complaint. And at the same time, we all can also receive complaints from the public and then see how we can go about solving those complaints, either by way of mediation or what have you. And then at the end of every investigation, this commission is to give recommendation to any authority or to make recommendation to the Attorney General of the Colonel of Colonel State. Because if you look at the structure and how the commission is, we have what we call dual purpose. The ombudsman aspect, which is receiving complaints and then giving out to address, making recommendations, and then the issue of anti grant agency. So, but we don't have prosecutive powers. The commission does not have any prosecutive powers. We investigate and then we refer to the Attorney General, who will now look at what we have investigated. If he feels there's a need to file a charge against those people who have been investigated against, then he can now go ahead and do that. So that is one area that I feel we should look at. As a team, I have a very good team working with me. Uh, and they are also always ever ready to contribute and make sure that we improve the activities of the commission. So that is one aspect that I feel is very, very crucial that I want to do. Then, secondly, okay, then secondly, we also have a plan of reorganizing the administrative structure of this commission. Because when I came in, I discovered that there is a problem with the issue of administration. It's all been here for the past eight months or so. There is no store officer. In fact, the structure of every governmental institution, you have to have a DPM or a director of that. But then I discovered that there is no DVM in this commission, and then everything, things were done actually anyhow. No actual procedure. No. So I now quickly wrote a letter to the head of service. I informed her of this development, and I also asked her to send a very competent. DPM so that we can work with him and then restructure the administrative uh, structure of the commission in order so that we can have uh, a smooth rolling of administration because I am a lawyer, I am not an administrator. And every institution you must have, as I said, you must have a DPM or a DAX. So you cannot operate without a head of admin. So she sent a very competent DPM who is here with us now and ever since he has started making some changes, restructuring everything that has to do with administration in the commission, he has done a lot and he is also doing a lot. Secondly, and on this aspect again, we also feel that we need uh, a PRO because there is no PRO when I came in. The issue of PR is very, very important, you all know, it's very, very important because. You, the, the, the press, are the ones who reach out to the public. There is no way the public will get to understand what is going on in an organization without you. That is why I always stress that your importance is very, very critical. So I decided to write a letter to the Commission of Information and also ask him to send a competent PRO so that we can have an organized PR unit. And even the day before yesterday, we spoke with the commissioner he assured me that he's going to send a very competent and very experienced PRO so that our PR unit will be very, very organized and improved. Then I also look at the issue of our registry. The registry, because ordinarily in every organization, especially a government institution, you must have an open and secret registry. The DP, the new DPM is also working on that. He has now dissected and divided the registry in order to have an open registry and then a secret registry. You see, that's why you have, you must have all these 
in order to have a very functional organization. Otherwise, things will just be going on anyhow. And you know, this is a very, very important government organization. Even if it's a private organization, there is a need to have a very good structure of administration. So this is the first uh, thing I did when I came in. Then, we also look at the Channel State Anti-Corruption uh, Institute because it was established some time ago so that we can be having some trainings on the issue of anti-corruption to government officials and even to people from other the, the, the private sector. You see, in the past, we, we normally used to take our staff to EFCC Academy in Abuja, to ICPC Academy in Nasara State, so, but now if we can have our own institution, we feel, because Kano said, is the first to establish a very organized and integrated agency like this, and other states are now following suit. So, we feel that there's a need to have an anti corruption institute, and it was established. The governor of Kano said, who has always been ready to give support to this commission, and which is why. The Commission has registered these tremendous successes right from 2015 to 20 uh, to date because I served, as I said earlier on, for five years in this Commission. So I have seen the political will from the government, how the governor has been supporting this organization, and that was why it registered a lot of successes to have this Canon State and Corruption Institute. So we want to now look at that institute with a view to improve and then with a the view to have, uh, to give them all the necessary support that they need to be setting up sensitization uh, programs and trainings for government officials with, uh, with regards to issues of, sort of, uh, of, of corruption. So, and then, you know, the issue of sensitization is very, very important. Now, I could remember when I returned from Austria, I attended, I, attended, I attended International Anti-Corruption Academy, which is an institute established by the United Nations. So when I came back in 2016, I now sat down and felt that there's a need for us to improve on the issue of sensitization. So I decided to establish anti-corruption clubs, and I decided to, see, to, to maybe start with some schools, because, you know, Kanosin is very, very wide, we have a lot of schools, and then we cannot just at one time cover all the schools. So I started with some part. Maybe uh, with regard to institution, higher institution, we established all in all the higher institution we have anti-corruption clubs. Oh, but then in second, so in secondary school level, we decided to pick some schools. Maybe if you look at maybe if you look at maybe Dambata, I now pick one boys' schools and then one girls' schools. We do the same thing. Gabasawa, the same thing. So maybe by the time we establish like maybe 30 to 40 percent, then later on we can now continue by establishing these clubs in other schools. So we have done that, and I feel by doing that, you are a kind of sensitizing the younger generation on what is corruption itself. Because people don't even know what corruption is. You can go to a primary school or a secondary school, or, uh, and you see a boy, he, he doesn't even know what is, whether by giving somebody money to ask for a favor, he doesn't know that it's bad. He doesn't even know that. Because we were discussing with one of my, 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 my friends, and he said that he was surprised a primary school pupil one day walked up to the head so then, oh, the prefect, or whatever you call it, at that, that stage. He went and gave him five naira. He said, please, whenever you are going to create monitors, please, put my name among the list of monitors. So that was very, very shocking, you know? A small boy knows how to even give money so that he can be favored in appointment. At that stage, I mean, it's shocking. So I feel like, let us start from the grassroots. Because you know you have clubs like the Boy Scout, the Boys Brigade, you know, through that you can instill some kind of discipline to younger generation by using those clubs. 
So I feel if we use anti-corruption gloves, definitely we can at least start from somewhere. And then we can achieve. If a boy knows that lying to teachers or to fellow students is bad, if he knows that coming to class late is also bad, then he should know that that is an aspect of corruption. It's not just about giving money so that he can get papers. Coming to school late is corruption. So at that stage, when I was a director of corruption, I called all the desk officers in our local government, and I also instructed them that they should, from time to time, reach out to those anti-corruption clubs in their own local government, and then be giving them some kind of uh, training, some sensitization stuff, so that those children will begin to understand, ah, this, is, this act is corruption, this act is corruption. And then before they grow up, at least they can come up, they can grow up with that kind of discipline instilled into their mind. So what I intend to do now that I'm in charge again, I want to, you know, straighten and fortify those anti-corruption clubs. That is what I feel is very, very important. We want to start doing that. We have done the first phase of creating the clubs. Now I want to go into the second phase by making sure that all schools have these anti-corruption clubs established. And then we'll be from time to time reaching out to them to sensitize the members to sensitize all other students on what corruption is and the dangers of corruption in our society. So that is on this aspect. So, and then one other thing I also feel is very, very crucial is the issue of the PCACC law, that is the Commission's law. So presently now, we are working in conjunction with the Council House of, House of Assembly to review the PCACC law with a view to improve the performance of the Commission and then we look at other areas where we can establish other maybe uh, uh, bodies or where we can even bring us maybe bring other laws that will strengthen the functions of the Commission because the public is aware that we have a problem in Canal State in which uh, marketers or manufacturers of food items and other items just wake up one day and just increase the prices of commodities anyhow. So that is one aspect that we want to look at when we want to review this law because we want to bring some laws, we want to introduce some laws into this uh, amended bill in such a way that the Commission can have power over these issues of incessant increase of prices of commodities because this is a very serious issue in our society and we are bent on tackling this issue. And then the issue of uh, the, the amendment actually uh, is an old uh, matter because we have always wanted to amend this PCACC law. In fact, when I, rem I could remember when I was the director of anti-corruption, I even started drafting some proposals for the bill. So now, alhamdulillah, that I'm in charge, I feel it is the right time for us to go and sit down and review this law to send it more better so that we can have a, a, a better way of tackling issues like the one I just gave. And the House of Assembly, we are very, we have a very, very good cordial relationship with them. The House Committee on Anti-Corruption, the Speaker of the House is also behind us 100%. And the executive governor is also waiting for us to bring this proposal to him so that he can approve and then even uh, uh, give us all the backing that we need. So that is one aspect on the issue of the PCAC law. Then another thing I want to also look at is to improve the public participation. Because as I said, anti-corruption crusade is everybody's business. We have in place now an OGP program which the council government also uh, introduced. In the past, we had the first action plan, which, which was to run from September 2018 to August 2020. Now it has finished. So we went to Duse on retreat, and we have developed the second action plan of the OGP. So OGP is all about transparency, it's all about accountability, 
is also about inclusiveness. So I want to use that as an opportunity to reach out to the members of the public through, the, through non government organizations like the civil societies so that we can work closely and the press, of course, so that we can work closely in making sure that we have a very good OGP program that we can implement and make sure that we implement it fully. Because the first action plan, actually, we were not able to uh, exhaustively implement all the activities laid down in the first action plan. Even though I was not around, I was, I, you know, I, you know, I went, I left for Ministry of Justice. But then when I came back, I noticed that we actually have not fully, you know, uh, 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 exhaust all those activities laid down in the first action plan. But this seven action plan, we are ready and we are also willing to make sure that all the activities we have in the second action plan are exhausted fully. So this is one area that also we want to improve on public participation, you know, engaging everybody in this fight against corruption because it's a very important issue and it's also involved everybody. That is for OGP. And then I also want to uh, tell you that from the day I resumed office, we have noticed some improvement with regards to the issue of receiving complaints. In the past, I looked at the statistics and discovered that the, the number of complaints received in the commission normally doesn't exceed more than 35, I think. But then, even the day before yesterday, the number of complaints we received, we received up to 60 complaints from the public. So you see, this one actually made me to be happy because it's like, Oh, it shows that the public have more confidence in the commission. Now, people are getting more confident in coming to hear their complaints in the commission. And then we also want to make sure that we don't let the public down. Well, ever ready at any time to improve and then to make sure that we solve every complaint that we receive from the public. The government is giving us all the support. It's giving us all the necessary support. In the past, I was made to understand uh, the well, the commission run on diesel. I was made in the past. I was made to understand that in the past, they used to maybe put like 30, 40 to 50 liters of diesel in a day. But now I have been received. Oh, oh I have received this month alone. I have received 2,500 liters of diesel from the government, and we have a reservoir which is full with diesel. So we don't have any problem with diesel now. So this is to show that we are giving, we are getting all the necessary support and we are going to make sure that we don't let the government and the public down with regards to our performances in China. Then one other aspect is the local government offices. You know, under section 15, subsection 1J of the commission, it provides for establishing local government offices across the state. So when I came, I discovered that there are only about three local government offices that are functioning properly. So we have now kickstarted the process of ensuring that all other offices of local governments are fully functional, fully furnished to, to receive complaints from people who are the local government areas that cannot be able to come down to the headquarters to lay their complaints. And then we have desk officers, you know, so that uh, we can listen the problems of our locals who are in local areas who cannot be able to come to the commission to lay their complaints. One other aspect is the issue of synergy between the commission and other stakeholders. Now, I can say we have improved a lot with regards to the issue of synergy between the commission, between the commission, the judiciary, the police, and the, all other stakeholders, like civil society organizations too. We have a very good synergy now, and Ministry of Justice, because the Honorable Attorney General is giving us 100% support. At any time he said we need anything, he's going to give us all the support we need. 
and then we have a very good relationship now with the judiciary. We have a very good relationship with the police. We have now a new director of operations who is a very seasoned, experienced investigator, and the, the department is now being reorganized. We are now receiving new police officers to replace the existing ones. That is one area which, uh, where we feel there's also an improvement so that the, 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 the activities of that operations department can be improved so that the whole aspect of the commission will also be improved because they are very, very important in the activities of the commission. The police are very, very important. So, so we have a very good synergy now. There's no any problem. We are working very well with all other stakeholders, like I said, the judiciary, the Ministry of Justice, the civil society organization as well. So that is one area because, you know, you, we need this synergy in order to succeed and in order to improve. Then, one other issue I also want to... Uh, when I resumed, I talked about the issue of compliance, strict compliance with the rule of law and procedure. You know, any institution cannot succeed without abiding by the rule of law, rule by the enabling law that establishes it, and then the normal procedure. So now, things have changed in this commission now. It has changed drastically. Everything now is based on procedure, based on the civil service rules, just like I said, we have a new DPM now, and then we also we are going to receive a PRO who is going to be in charge of the PR unit. So we want to make sure that we do things based on procedure. Based on procedure, because if you digress from rule of law and procedure, then definitely you will not succeed, and then some things will not work well the way you want it. So I want to always insist that rule of law and procedure is our guiding principles. And we're not going to digress from that. We're going to stick to that to make sure that we improve. And one other thing again, uh, we're also uh, making effort to see that we connect this commission with the national grid because all along the commission has been running on diesel. And you know practically it's not it's not even good. So we are making this process, or we are, we, are, we, are, we, are, we are making this effort to make sure that we we have power connected to the commission. At least the diesel we we be receiving every month, every month will now be complementing with the, with the power that we have, so that we don't have any problem of power. Now we don't, but I feel it's also important that we should connect to the national grid, which is very very important. So that is it. So at this stage. Uh, the press, as I said, you are very, very crucial to the overall success of this commission. You are very, very crucial. We, I see you as first critical stakeholders. So I will want to, at this stage, we seek the support and cooperation of the media so that we can achieve this objective because as I said earlier on fighting corruption is very very important business and it's everybody's business. It's not our business at all. It's your business too. Everybody here has young ones and we want to see that the future generation come up with a disciplined mind devoid of any iota of corruption. You see not only corruption, receiving complaints, giving redress to people who have been wrong is very very crucial too. It's very, very important too because if you can contribute in securing the right, right of somebody who has been infringed, who, whose rights has been infringed, definitely you will know maybe that single act can end you paradise. Yes. Isn't it? That single act can end you paradise. Yes. That is it. So that's why I keep commending, I always commend His Excellency. Because right from the day we started in 2015, Wallahi has been giving 100% to this commission. Anything we seek for, he gives. When we organize programs, he attends personally. So I'm sure it's because he sees the importance of securing people's rights and then fighting corruption. If you secure somebody's rights, it's very, very important. It's very, very relevant to what you are doing. So please, I want to seek your support. I want to seek your cooperation. 
I want to work with you hand in hand to make sure that we achieve a lot in this commission. So I think at this stage, I, I, I would want to stop. Uh, inshallah, I pray that God will give us all the support and God will guide us in whatever we are doing. So, assalamu alaikum. Say what you, you know, so, kuma, my metada.